Hey space fans, it's Tarek Malik, editor-in-chief of space.com, and on this week in space we talked everything Starship Flight 9. The fact that it exploded, kind of almost landed, and what comes next. Space.com's Mike Wall explains. Starships are meant so, to fly, stand up uh, and touch the So sky. we had... <laughs> Whenever you're done, we we had our test. That's Nicki Minaj, man, come on. We had our what? What's a Nicki Minaj? Well, the singer of Starships. So, okay. Oh, okay. Let's continue. Let's continue. Yes. So we had <laughs> Test Flight Nine, the highly anticipated uh, Test Flight Nine, which was not a failure, but not a success either. It had successful elements. Uh, they reused the super heavy booster with with all of but but four of its engines uh, out for their second flight which is pretty impressive uh i'm just gonna digest here went up had a successful hot staging which has been a bugaboo a couple of times upper stage reached the desired suborbital trajectory and then it all started to come apart as the audio and the video is about to, to relate to you um so so this is good but it's not what they were hoping for right uh should you only start with me, or should we go straight to Mike? Mike is the one that wrote the story. Mike's, <laughs> Mike's the smart one in the room, so why don't we just let it, him tee off? Yeah, Mike, Mike, why don't you recount where Flight 9 rates in, the, I guess, the retinue of, of Starship flights so far? Yeah. What I happened? Mean, what happened? It's, I mean, I would say they, they would probably say partial success, kind of like Rod said, you know, and they're, they're always quick to say, I mean, all, I mean, the, these are test flights. You know, Starship is a very ambitious project, and... We're still in the event that it's 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 still under development, so they don't expect perfect success and all this. And so, there 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 definitely were some some things to point to as as very positive signs. I mean, one of them is that they did refly super heavy, the giant first stage booster, for the first time, and that's that's a big milestone because the the entire point of this vehicle is to be fully reusable and rapidly reusable. So this 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 one flew this past January on flight seven. And it came back to the launch pad on that flight and was caught by the chopstick arms of the launch tower and they refurbished it, took four engines off, put new ones on. But yeah, 29 of the 33 Raptor engines were the same as the first, as flight seven. And it, it, it did quite well. You know, they, they also did some experiments with this booster on this flight. So they didn't try another chopsticks catch. So they, they kind of diverted it out for what was supposed to be like a hard ocean splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico, or are we supposed to call it what, what Gulf of America? I'm, 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 I'm they, like, Gulf of Mexico. Gulf they of just said the, Gulf the Gulf, which I thought was very politically yeah. adroit. Um, we'll say that. We'll say that. But so, so they, they were doing experiments with it too. You know, they brought it in at like a different angle of attack so that there would be more drag on it to, to test out a new kind of landing strategy where they could use less fuel for the landing burn and stuff like that. And that seemed to work. And it 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 like almost kind of reached the like desired end goal, which was the hard splashdown, but it it kind of blew up during during the landing burn about six minutes into flight. So that's probably mostly good for them, I think they would say. And ship the 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 giant upper stage, it was supposed to 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 stay together for about 65 minutes and come down for a soft splashdown in the Indian Ocean off the coast of Western Australia. And it like reached space, like you guys were saying, and it, it it was on the desired trajectory, which was an improvement over the previous two Starship flights. Where ship, I I would say it was disappointing how ship how ship performed on those two flights. It it didn't hold together for it. It, it blew up about ten minutes into flight, or, or a little less than that on both of those flights. Yeah, very so, shortly after separation. I, I yeah that. yeah it did it didn't survive very long after separation, and it like rained debris down on the Turks and Caicos and on the Bahamas. You know, people probably saw all those videos coming in from people in those areas, which is like this huge artificial meteor shower streaking across the sky. So that didn't happen on this flight. It it it's it made it to space, but it didn't didn't make it all the way to the end you know they're they're trying to do experiments on this one too they 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 had these dummy starlink satellites on board eight of them i think that they wanted to deploy as like a first as as a key test to see that the upper stage can actually deploy satellites that didn't work they they like couldn't fully open the 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 kind of pez dispenser payload bay door so they abandoned that try they were they were also going to do like an in-spate relight of one of the raptor engines on the upper stage which has six of them that didn't they they couldn't get that to work either because they had an anomaly like around this time or where they they kind of lost attitude control with ship and so they said they a not, fuel leak they think right a that, fuel that 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 yeah that's that's what they said during the the you know, like the launch webcast and then when you when you read the kind of flight recap that they published after the fact it doesn't really give a, a main cause it just mm-hmm. kind of says they 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 had an attitude control error i, I believe is the terminology they used so I guess it's kind of TBD 
what what caused it but it seemed like yeah yeah leak was the kind of go-to explanation like at the time but we'll have to see and so they were not able to control it for for landing for splashdown and it just kind of came back uncontrolled and i mean if you can't control how it's re-entering earth's atmosphere that's not great it's going to break apart you know earth's atmosphere is going to going to tear it up it's going so fast so that's presumably what ended up happening they lost contact with it 46 minutes into flight and presumably pieces of it are now at the bottom of the indian ocean but um so yeah i mean it's a mixed bag like the like the previous two flights have been on both flight seven and flight eight there were huge successes with super heavy both they, they did chopstick catches on both of those so they've made big strides with the first stage i think ship though still quite a bit of work to be done i think yeah um and it's just it's it's just interesting you know i mean they're they're yeah, there was a big, like the kind of Starbase talk from, yeah, from Elon yesterday where he gave one of his kind of semi-regular, yeah. here's our Mars plans and here's how Starship fits into them. He he gave one of those talks yesterday and um, it's very ambitious. We can like talk about that some if if you guys want to. But I think well, on these you, flight let's, tests, let's point out in the in the past, every year he's given these talks and they've been live, yeah. right, with reporters there. This was not a live talk. It seems like it was recorded. And it was well, I, shared they, I think he wanted yeah. to make sure that that they were able to do what they always do when you visit Hawthorne, which is they put the the press in a little tiny box up in a riser <laughs> and then shove eighty SpaceX employees in front of you that go yay yay. But yeah, that talk was a little reminiscent of twenty sixteen. I thought. Yeah, and it, it was interesting because we were told there was going to be there was going to be the update prior to the to the flight nine launch and then right. there was just no update like after the yeah, yeah like after but, launch we, we didn't really hear much about the talk it just didn't happen and then elon said on x that they were gonna they're, they're gonna air it shortly and then yeah they ended up posting up uh it's it's like a 42 minute video they ended up posting right. it on on x yesterday so I, i'm not sure what went into the decision of how to kind of broadcast it out but it it like did seem recorded and it was, it was, it was a presentation to SpaceX employees at Starbase. I, I don't, there are probably a few select reporters who were invited to see it, but it wasn't like a general call to the press or anything like that. But not um, Tarek Malik. Tarek did not get in. I didn't get an invite. Tarek didn't get an invite. Um, yeah, I know. I'm sure it was lost in the mail. I'm sure I'll find yeah. it. In yeah, a little bit, right? Well, but thanks, anyway. Mike. That about does it for this episode. Uh, oh, just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, sure. I have to say, I was watching on a couple of my favorite space groups on on Facebook and elsewhere. You know, I'm old, so I still use Facebook. Uh, waiting for somebody to say it, and they said it. It's been about a half an hour after the broadcast terminated, which was it only took the Saturn V two flights, and then it carried people. Which is a valid point, but you're talking about a massive, massive budget and a whole lot more people working on it and the traditional cost plus budgeting for that. So obviously a very different creature, but one does begin to wonder how many more it'll take to get this right. Now, do you know when they're going to uh, fly just Raptor 3s? Do they have a date for that? I think like by the end of the year, that yeah. during the presentation, mm -hmm. Elon said that they're they're also working on on sort of version three of starship what 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 launched on tuesday uh was you know was version two like i believe and i mean version three is like the mature the first like fully mature version that he thinks can go to mars you know will be capable of of fast reuse and and be reliable and and be able to to, to be refueled in earth orbit which is a huge part of this whole project you know you yeah. like launch these ship upper stages to earth orbit they they get they, they, they do a rendezvous with like a tanker, um, which will just, you know, just be like a modified Starship upper stage filled with fuel. And um, then they'll, they'll fuel up and then they'll kind of jet off to, to Mars, hopefully in giant fleets of, of that, that, you know, it'll be like hundreds of these things at once. He um, said a thousand, yeah. You said, you said thousands, but yeah, yeah. I mean, we, like we can talk about the ambition that, that is always kind of inherent to these talks, but yeah. So and it's 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 an entirely different vision it's entirely different expectation of what starship will do compared to the saturn five right i mean when it right. when it launched people it was launching three people what what like elon wants to do is launch hundreds of people he like wants to turn the, the starship upper stage into a craft that can hold maybe 100 people that seems ambitious but dozens at the very least and so there's got to be a whole like different type of life support. It's got to keep these people alive for months on the way to Mars. It's just another order of, of magnitude of complexity and, and like difficulty that's involved. And that's one of the things that you need to talk about when you talk about Mars plans. It's just like, 
I mean, you can't wave away what's going to be needed mm. on this upper stage to be reliable enough to carry people. This what's what's currently launching doesn't have any life support in it at all. You know, it's just um, it's just like a shell of a spacecraft, and that's. Right. It's a big Elon spacecraft. Musk told me in 2019 when I asked that question that that was going to be simple and they didn't have to deal with it because they've like already the, done it on Gra on Dragon. Just like yeah. the dozens of tons of radiation shielding they they need. Uh, let me break in here for a second. We're going to run to another uh, spot and we'll be right back. 